Hey guys, Lagmus Prime here. So today I'm going to be doing my D Brigade deck profile. Uh, I've been playing D Brigade for quite a while now. Uh, my locals even considers me the D Brigade guy because one of my beginning starter decks, or one of the decks that I used to play uh, early on, was D Brigade, and it was the only deck that I really did good with. It was really cheap. You just rookie rushed, and you did a lot of stuff. But in this new set, it's gotten a lot better. So we can get up to higher levels and just swarm the board as fast as we can. So, go ahead and get into it. I'm running four of the, for our eggs, I'm running four of the brand new BT-14 Missimons. Um, so when attacking, once per turn, you can return three cards with D-Brigade or Digi-Police from the trash to the top of the deck. And the Digimon gets plus 2k DP. This is great because, honestly, you're being able to get your stuff back on top of the deck for you to just play out on the field instead of it just sitting in trash. Great, absolutely great. And any ways to get rid of floodgates? Well, this is one way to do it because, well, you'll see later. Anyway, on to the rookies. Running four of the brand new BT14 Commandermons. Love the art for these guys. These alt arts are amazing. Glad I was able to get a couple of play, or play set. And uh, it's the brand new searcher of the deck. Uh, so on play, you reveal five, add one debrigated Digi Police, and then bottom deck the rest, or top deck the rest. Honestly, you can set them on top. Say you need to come, you got your high commander mon, and you got a whole bunch of commander mon you want to play, or cargo, whatever it is. Put them on top or bottom. It's an easy way to get what you need fast. And then it's inheritable is even better. Just all turns once per turn when this Digimon would leave the battle area, other than one of your effects. You can delete another Digimon with a D-Brigade trait to prevent it from leaving. So, it's an excellent way to prevent your stuff from leaving. Like, having a protection effect like that is absolutely insane. Just due to the fact that it, it's leaving the field. It's not deleting, it's not DP reducing. It is, if you just leave, the, I mean, DP reducing would definitely still kill it. But, still, it's... Anything that will prevent from leaving the field is by far like the best protection. It's like an almost a pretty much an Omni prevention. Anyway, on to the next level full threes. So we have four of the old BT4 Commander Mon. So this one is an on deletion effect. You reveal the top three cards of your deck and you play a Commander Mon among them without paying its memory cost. Place the rest at bottom. So it's a good way to float. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is be able to play one of these with a high commander mon and then if it dies in security or if it dies in the next turn just delete the commander mon and then just play another one <laughs> it's pretty funny just keep just keep floating stuff into there as soon as it dies or just swing with this get an early check play another one anyway on to the next ones i like to keep the play cost pretty cheap with this so you can play out as many as possible so i go with the old bt3 commander mon these things were a pretty penny um yeah it's a simple two play cost 3k dp commander mon can't go wrong with it uh, just another way to digivolve for something a two play cost to choke your opponent i've had instances where when i went to use cargo's effect I revealed like this one and then two of these so three four five six seven you're able to play out all three of them it is absolutely hilarious just to play three commander mon out of nowhere and or you can just play it from hand if you have enough memory like i think these are probably one of the better ones to play i don't run the blockers in this deck because the fact that they are four cost really hurts and the like 5k DP commander mods. Instead, I just run two of these ones, which are the decoy commander mods. It can help out a lot because sometimes you don't have the protection effects underneath your Digimon. So you can easily help it and protect it with the um, decoy. I only run two. Uh, probably could bump this up to three, but I'm keeping it at two for now. Because I don't really ever want to see these in my hand all that often. Because I don't like digivolving into them. I don't I don't like having them on the board early game. Mostly late game. Anyway, on to the level 4s now. Now we have 4 of the brand new best level 4 for the deck. High Commander Mon. So this guy is a 4 cost. 2 digivolve. 4k DP. 
a high commandermon is also treated as a commandermon. So as soon as you get delete this gets deleted, then you can play a commandermon. So you can play one of these or one of these, and these are better to play because it's a level four for free, and it gets you even more bodies on board. So it has the great ability of when attacking, you reveal the top three cards of your deck and you play a card with D-Brigade or Digi-Police with a play cost of three or less among them without paying the cost. And then bottom deck the rest. Great way to play out cards. You can play out any of these guys. You can even play the Tamers of the deck because they have Digi-Police or D-Brigade in their traits. So this can play out bodies or it can play out Tamers. And then it has the same effect as this Commander Mon, so it's just another protection effect. It's still great though, because then that gives a one stack, two sets of protections. So, that's why we run four of those. But I mean, you pretty much want to run four of those anyway, just so you can swarm the board. Anyway, now, on to the other little fours. We have four of Numamon. This one is great to have in the deck. It is a Digipolice card. On play, when did you evolve in? You can place the Satsuki's Tamahime from your hand as his bottom Digimon Digivolution card, and one of your Digimon gains rush for the turn. So it's a great way to. You don't need hybrids in the game anymore. You don't need them in the high. You don't need hybrids anymore. These are your hybrids, pretty much. Essentially, if you have at least three memory, just play this guy. Put your tamer underneath. Swing for game. Um, also, it's just an easy way, like, say you got a board mate or a early game board mate, and you're like, well, I have a tamer, I have a Numamon. And I just hard play for three and get my tamer out at the end of my turn anyway. So, hey, you got two cards out pretty much for the price of one. Uh, it, inheritable is give something blocker. Uh, this doesn't really come up all that often because usually most of the time everything is a blocker. That's also one reason why I don't run the blocker commander mons in this is because everything in this deck pretty much becomes a blocker. There is nothing that won't become a blocker as soon as you go into your level, into your level six unless you go into this one side level six that we go into. Uh, to finish off our level fours, running two Steel's Dramons. Uh, I run only two of these, and I don't really run any of the other Steel's Dramons. This is just the better one, and I only I keep these a bit low because you really want to see the these ones. You want to see these, the level threes, a little bit more than the level fours whenever you're playing stuff. Unless you have a lot of tamers or you need more bodies. But anyway, the reason why I keep this one in here is because it's got a great inheritable. It's also jamming, so you just digivolve for two. Just start swinging at security. Don't worry about a dang thing. And then uh, Seals Drummond, um, what the inheritable is, once returned, when you play another Digimon with Debra in his traits, it gains rush. So you have this in your stack. Play out one of these Commander Mons or anything like that and just start swinging again. Another way to give something rush and just start getting those checks as early as possible. Next, we go into our level fives. We run four of the brand new Cargo Dramons. Love this card because it's almost like Tank Dramon uh, from EX3, but it has an on play and when Digivolving. So you reveal the top three cards of your deck and you play a card with Debrigade or Digipolice trait and a play cost of four or less, but this one you trash. So another way to play out small guys, another way to play out your Tamer, same thing. It has a very nice all turns once per turn effect. When one of your other Digimon is deleted, reveal the top three cards of your deck and you play a Commander Mon. Then you trash the rest. It's pretty much this effect, but something else gets deleted. So say this gets deleted, search out, find a Commander Mon, play it. Then that, since that got deleted, search another three, play a Commander Mon, bam. You got another blocker. You got two more blockers on board. Love this card. On to the last of the level fives. I run only three of the old EX3 Tank Dramon. Uh, like I said, it's it's definitely the better of the other Tank Dramon. The other Tank Dramon I have considered actually running in the deck because you're going to be doing a lot of swinging. And the old Tank Dramon does have a your turn thing. So pretty much what it is, is the old Tank Dramon is you would go into it and it's a your turn effect, not once per turn. When one of your D Brigade, I believe it's one of your D Brigade that an in trait attacks, you search the top two cards and you play a Commander Mon. So it's a good way to keep playing out cards, but it has no inheritables. It, it and it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine, but I prefer this one because you reveal top three, play a Digimon with D Brigade for play cost of five or less, and then trash the rest. 
so you get more stuff in trash. And the inheritable is when one of your Digimon with D Brigade and its traits attacks, reveal the top two cards of your deck, and you play Commandermon among them without paying the cost. So this is pretty much the old Tank Dramon effect right here, but only once per turn. The old one was not once per turn, but you pretty much had to have a level five just sitting there on board so you could just keep swinging and playing. Anyway, on to the level sixes. Ooh, I'm really glad I was able to get all of these old hearts because, oh man, look at the shine on this one. Oh, you probably won't be able to see it because it's pretty, pretty dark, but I was able to acquire all four of the Alt Art Brigadramons. Love these things. And this is the best level four, or level four, level six to go into because this is the way that you get all of these out on field. So when you did evolve, you delete up to seven play cost totals worth of your opponent's Digimon. So this is a great way to get rid of floodgates. And then on your turn, all of your Digimon with the D-Brigade trait game blocker. <coughs> so Numamon won't be able to get it, but pretty much everything else will. Um, and then the end of your turn, you reveal the top three cards of your deck, and you can play up to seven total play cost worth of cards with D-Brigade or Digipolice without paying the cost, and then you trash the rest. So, once again, even more ways to put bodies on board. You can have like 10 bodies on board in like three turns, maybe even two turns, if you do it correctly, and they'll all be blockers. They'll all have effects that'll play out even more. So, and they'll have protection. Best freaking thing ever. But one thing that has, one thing that will stop you so hard is some kind of floodgate that prevents you from playing Digimon by effects such as Pillowmon. So in order to remedy that, uh, you probably saw me in my videos when I was playing D-Brigade, I was running a Gigimon. Multiple players can run Gigimon, you can run the Aboramon Ace, I've seen that run in there, so you can play even more Digimon. That is great if you're going against games that don't have any floodgates, but if you do, you need something to out it, and DCD Bomb can only get you so far. So I decided to replace Gigimon or the Aboramon Ace for the old EX3 Dark Dramon, not just for the alt art, but just because when you Digivolve from this, you're gonna be having a lot of D-Brigades and trash, so this can be a free Digivolve. Then, when you play another Digimon with D-Brigade and traits, does not have to be by effect as long as something is played. You delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost less than or equal to the Digimon you played, and you unsuspend him. So, once you finally get that freaking floodgate out, then you can just start swinging and playing even more. And this is a, yeah, your turn once per turn, but it's like... Yeah, you, you got to play the Digimon, and more than likely, it's not going to work with these ones. It's going to be with the three costs, but still, you got to get rid of the Floodgate. You can't do anything with the deck if there is a Floodgate, and you can only gain the Wind Digivolving effect once with Brigadramon unless you have multiple level fives. So that's the reason why I run one of these. Great way to get rid of the Floodgates. Now onto the Tamers. Run four of the brand new Satsuki. And I gotta say, I love the alt art designs for this deck. They look absolutely amazing. So, with this one, this is the best, the best Tamer to have uh, because in security, you obviously play it. Starting your main phase, if your opponent has a Digimon, you just gain a memory. You just gain a memory. Uh, I've had times where I've had three of these on board. They had just one Digimon. I go from two all the way to five. It was a great way to gain memory. Uh, and then it introduces the new mechanic called Mind Link. So you Mind Link with one of your Digimon. And what this does is you take it and you slide it underneath your Digimon. And that Digimon gains. And you can only do it with Numamon, Monzimon, or Digipolice traits. So you can't do it with Commandermon. You can't do it with this Commandermon. Or this Commandermon, you can pretty much only do it with High Commandra, Numa, uh, Cargo, Briga. So do remember that it does have to have the Digipolice trait, not the D Brigade. Uh, and then 
all turns, Father Sigmund has new Amon or Monzamon in its name, or the Digipolice trait, it gains jamming and reboot. And then at the end of the turn, you can play it from that Digivolution card without paying the cost. So, yeah, it's a great way to just go in there, swing with a quick jamming, and then at the end of your turn, pull it out. Um, usually what I do with this is I mind link it to High Commandramon, because I don't want my way of getting my bodies on board early dying as fast. And sometimes I just do it underneath the level 5s. Well, that's the level 5. So that way, just getting a quick hit in and then going into a brig. Great way to just give jamming. Anyway, on to the last tamer that I run. I run one of Izzy. So, uh, everything in the deck is black. So, just play this, play it for three, and you have a memory setter. You reveal the top three cards of your deck, and you place them back in any order. So it's a great way to, you know, great way to put cards back in the way you need them to, just in case something happens. Or you can, you know, get it ready for play something for free. Anyway, and then to the day options, run four of the brand new defense training. I could probably reduce this down to three. I feel like four might be a bit excessive, but you do need to search in order to find your level six here. But it also is a great way of digivolving for free. So like, this is definitely gonna become a staple in most decks. Uh, probably maybe two ofs, maybe, maybe even four ofs. Like I said, this is probably a bit too much. I could probably take down one at another DCD bomb or another Camandramon. It's your choice. It's, you know, it's up to you. But for me, I run four of for now and see how it goes. Pretty much you reveal the top two cards, add a black card, then return the rest of the bottom of the deck in any order. And then the next turn, you can Digivolve into a black Digimon um, and you reduce the cost by two. So. Now on to the, these two. I run two of the black memory boost. Like I said, I kind of want to go into the line and not just rookie rush. Plus, I, you need this for the floodgates because you're going to see a match where Pillowmon literally prevented me from doing anything. So, I need this in my hand and I need it like as soon as possible. So, I'm going to be running two of the uh, black memory boost, reveal four cards, add a black card, and then next turn, gain two memory by trashing it. So, pretty much everybody should know what the black memory boosts do by now. Hopefully. Now to counter yellow vaccine, because you're probably going to be seeing it everywhere. I run two Kongus, Congo, however you want to say it, not quite sure. Uh, so I run two of these because the security effects are going to be ridiculous this, this, um, this format in BT14. So until the end of your opponent's turn, your opponent's Digimon, with play cost of 7 or less, can't attack players. So this can also counter D-Brigade and um, Lugamon. Or Fenry, whatever. And so they can't attack with play cost of 7 or less, and cards can't be added to security kits. And cards can't be added to security stacks by your opponent's effects. So this is one way to stop Luga, to stop Yellow Vaccine, to stop a counter, a, a mirror match. Uh, D Brigade, so great, great option to have in the deck, I think definitely in this format. And then we run the one of DCD Bomb, I wish there was a foil of this, I wish there was a foil of these two cards, I really wish there were, but there is none. Anyway, so DCD Bomb, you need to evolve one of your guys, or one of the opponent's guys, and then you can return three cards with D Brigade or Digi Police from the trash to the top of the deck, and delete six total play cost worth of your opponent's Digimon. Great way to get rid of floodgates as well. That's the reason why I'm only running one because I decided to add the Dark Dramon because this one is able to get rid of floodgates, this is able to get rid of floodgates, and they're both able to go from trash to into the deck by either the egg or pretty much uh, other things. Anyway, yeah, this is my D Brigade deck profile. Hopefully, you enjoyed. Uh, I know there's definitely room for improvement. Um, this is definitely not set in stone. Obviously, there's many different ways that you can make the deck. Like I said, uh, if you go into a locals and you know you're not going to be running into floodgates and you're just going to have fun and try and see how many bodies you can get on board, you don't have to run Dark Dramon. Run GG. Run Diaboramon Ace. 
and just have fun with it. Uh, you can replace a bunch of these. You can take, you can even take out some of these other stuff like Seals Ramans and then just run like a whole bunch of Commandras and just play them out. It's, this deck is very versatile in terms of D Brigade. It is an archetype deck, so you won't be able to get too many fancy things in here. Uh, heck, you could probably even run Jumbo in here, which is one way of doing it because you'd be able to just play out Cargo Dramon and then play out more bodies, play out the High Command Dramon next turn, swing for more bodies. Like, it has a good bit of potential. Right now, though, it's still, still new, so we'll find out and see how well that goes. But anyway, thank you again so much for watching this deck profile. Really glad. Let me know in the comments uh, if there's any changes or if there's anything that you would you would pr pr prefer to play in it or how you would play it or if you made changes, how it worked for you. Please let me know. I'm happy to hear it. But anyway, hopefully you guys have yourself a good day and I'll catch you later. Baby!